Hello guys, welcome to another amazing Max tutorial. Today I want to talk about uh, the JIT GLPX object. Let's create it. And let's give it the name Toot03. As you can see I already created uh, the OpenGL context. I created uh, the toggle, the QMetro, with uh, an argument of 5. So we have a frame every 5 milliseconds, in theory. A trigger which triggers the bang, raise, and another bang. And we send uh, everything to our JIT GL render called Toot03. Then I have my window with uh, named uh, Toot03, floating one, size 400 by 400. Yeah. Uh, the JIT GL Peaks object is really like uh, the JIT GL slab object. Instead, it uses uh, the gen, uh, the gen uh, patching style and uh, it's, uh, it works on the GPU, like the JIT GL slab. So why is it, it is better to work on the GPU if we are working with uh, a lot of pixels? It's better because we get uh, really fast uh, calculations on the GPU, because uh, usually GPU has uh, a lot of cores, instead uh, of the CPU that uh, usually has something like 4, 2 cores or even 8 cores, the GPU has something like 100 of cores, even thousands. So while the CPU is more powerful, the GPU has uh, a lot more cores, so it, it can do a lot of operations in parallel. And this is exactly what the GLPX object does. So we write a program uh, here in the JIT uh, GLPX window and this program will be applied to every incoming pixel that comes into the object. This is uh, really like a fragment shader. For who knows uh, how shaders work, this is like uh, a fragment shader. So it works on the rasterized images and uh, it uh, creates our final pixels. Right, so let's see. We need a matrix. We need the JIT matrix. Let's make it for, uh, for planes. Float 32 and dimensions, uh, sorry, dimensions 400 by 400. Let's plug this bang here. And let's feed three GL peaks with this matrix. So now, the JIT GLPX object will work on a matrix which, which has these sides and these planes. So we need also a JIT GL video plane object, which is like a plane on which we project our video. So it is really like uh, the final uh, video projection, but we need this because G GLPX works with uh, textures. So it is outputting a texture and we need the G GL video plane to, to see it. All right, so let's see. Uh, we don't need those uh, inlet because uh, in this tutorial I want to create uh, images from scratch with uh, the JITGLPX object. Uh, it, um, I want to achieve the coding style of the Shader Toy sites, site, but uh, in this first tutorial we are just going to see the basis. So, first of all, we need the coordinates of the input matrix. We have several ways to do that. We can use uh, the norm object the norm object uh, uh, gives us, uh, let's see, I made uh, a little painting. The norm object gives us the coordinates of the input matrix in the range 0, 1 on both uh, axes. So we had 0, 1 on the x axis and 0, 1 on the y, and uh, here in the middle all the possible combinations on these two. 
Then we have the S norm, which are the senior normalized uh, coordinates. I need another painting. So we have the zero in the center, uh, minus one here on top for the epsilon, minus one here on the left for the x, and then one and one and and all the possible combinations. Then we have the cell object, which gives us the integer coordinates of the input matrix. This is a lot like uh, norm, but instead of giving us normalized coordinates, it gives us uh, the coordinates in the range 0 to the matrix size uh, minus 1, both in the x and y directions. So uh, we are going to use the cell but we need the, the normalized coordinates so we can divide the, the cell uh, the cell coordinate by the total dimensions of the matrix uh, we can get them uh, from this object dim so this way we are getting the normalized coordinates we could use uh, also the the norm object to achieve that uh, result but we will use uh, the cell and dim it's, it's the same. So let's see what our coordinates look like when we give them directly into the into the output. We are getting the coordinates uh, on the red and green channel. So we have the zero here on the top left corner, one uh, on the right for the x, and the one on the bottom for the y. Right. So in this first part. I want to see how we can plot the uh, uh, functions with the, the JIT GLPX object. Uh, so we can see the graph of the function that are built in in uh, the JIT GLPX object. Uh, these functions are a lot uh, like the GLSL functions, which is uh, the language used by the JIT GLS lab, and it's the OpenGL shading shading language uh, object written GLSL and it's the the shaders uh, programming language it's a lot like C but uh, it has uh, vectors like uh, G G GLPX so uh, to to plot the graph of a function we need uh, to use the smooth step function so what uh, what what does the smooth step function I made another painting Let's see. Here it is. So uh, the smooth set functions uh, output uh, the a zero if the incoming value that goes here in the right inlet is uh, less than uh, threshold value one, and it outputs one if the incoming value is um, greater than the, the second value. And in between uh, those values, the smooth step makes this uh, smooth uh, transition from 0 to 1. So let's see how we can use this. We need, uh, first of all, we need to switch, uh, which is uh, taking one of the components of the, the vector. In this case, we have uh, a two two component vectors vector which is uh, this the coordinate vector which has the x and y components and we need to make some function of x let's for example make the sine function we are gonna plot the sine function so what we need to do is to give the x to the sine uh, function maybe we could multiply it by 2 pi so we get the full period All right and then we get to feed the smooth step with the uh, two thresholds so we can choose some uh, some transition value Oh, let me show you how this function works in practice. So, for example, let's create a vector. This is our final output vector for plane for 
three colors and the alpha value. So for example, let's plug it like that. And let's give it some values. So for example, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. And let's give it the widths, uh, the x coordinate. Let's see what we get. So we are getting uh, a smooth transition between 0 0.25 here for our x value and 0 0.75 here for our x value. And we get 0 and one and a smooth transition in between those two values. All right. So let's see what, uh, how we can use the smooth step function to plot, uh, to plot the graph of uh, the sine function. So let's delete those values. Let's for example, give uh, a transition between the minus 0, 0 0.2 and uh, the actual value of our function and we are going to test the epsilon the epsilon coordinate against uh, this function so let's switch uh, our epsilon coordinate from the coordinates vector and let's uh, plug it here so this is our incoming value that has to be tested against uh, the threshold values. And let's give it, let's plug this into this vector. So let's see what we get. We are getting something like the, the area of the sine function. If you're following me, uh, you'll understand that uh, here, the epsilon value is less than uh, the sine function value, so we get a zero. When it is uh, less than uh, minus, uh, less than uh, zero point zero two than the actual uh, value of the sine function, we get uh, a smooth transition. You can see it here. Let's make it bigger. Okay. So you can see that we have this smooth transition on the epsilon uh, axis when uh, the function is uh, minus 0 0.2 less than the actual sine value. Well, sorry, when the epsilon coordinate is less than the actual sine value. And then when, when it is greater, we get uh, the, the one value and in the between in between the, the sine value and the sine value minus 0 0.2, we get this uh, smooth transition. But this is not already the graph of the function. We are getting something like the area of the function. So what we want to do is to duplicate this smooth step function and to apply it again. But this time we want to go from the actual sine value to the, the sine values plus uh, some uh, other value, in this case uh, 0 0.2. And we're going to test the, the epsilon coordinate against uh, the sine function value. And we are going to subtract those two functions. So let's see. All right. We are going to subtract those, uh, those values. So we, are, we get uh, one, in for both the, those smooth step, we we getting one after the the epsilon is greater than the sine function value, but we are subtracting them, so we get a zero. But as you can see, the the graph is going out to out of our scope of our window. That's because the sine function goes from minus one to one, and so we want to to make it in the range uh, 0 1 so what we can do is to add a 1 to our sine function so it goes in the range 0 0 2 and then we can multiply by 0 0.5 which is dividing by 2 so we have it in the range 0 1 let's see if this works 
All right, we can diminish this value so we get uh, a smaller graph. All right, and we still get some smooth transition in the borders, so we get anti-aliased uh, borders. Now let's pack this stuff. And let's call this uh, our plot. We can call this our plot function. And let's plot some other built-in uh, GGLPix function. Let's plot the actual uh, smooth step function. Let's give it. Uh, let's give it some value like uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. We're going to test to make a function of x, and uh, we are going to test against our epsilon value. And we can make this uh, blue. So our sign function will become now red because we are feeding it in the red channel. Our smooth step function should be blue because we are giving it in the blue channel. All right. So this is how the smooth step function looks like. It is zero when the, our x value is less than 0 0.25 and it is one when uh, it is greater than 0 0.75 and in the middle we have this uh, smooth transition we can also plot uh, some other function which, which are the same of uh, the GLSL language for example we have fract we have the floor function we have the say seal we have also oh, sorry we have a sort of functions that we have also in GLSL. Let's, for example, plot uh, the floor function. So we need we need another jump plot. Let, uh, we can't use the floor function uh, as it is because uh, it gives us the integer value, which is uh, um, the nearest and uh, the smallest the nearest uh, value of our incoming uh, uh, value. So for example, if we, if we give it the, the x value as it is, we are getting the, always the zero value because the smallest value between, uh, the integer smallest value <laughs> between uh, zero and one is uh, zero. So we need, for example, to multiply this by some value, for example, 10. So now we have the x value in the range uh, 0, 10. So this is this is getting uh, all the smallest integer in the range uh, 0, 10. Now we're going to divide by 10. So we have, uh, again, the 0, 1 range. We give it the epsilon coordinate we can make this green and let's see right so this is how the floor function looks like and uh, yes this is how you plot the graph inside uh, the JIT GLPix word for example we can also animate those functions for example, we can we we should give the GGLPix some uh, time value, which we can use to animate uh, our our fragment shader. So, for example, we can use uh, the clocker object, which gives us the elapsed time at regular intervals. We give it the interval we in which we want uh, it to give us. Um, the time value, but uh, this is in milliseconds. We want it uh, in seconds, so we're going to divide by 1,000, and we must uh, we must uh, send it uh, like uh, like uh, a parameter to our GTGLPix. I chose the 
the name U time, the U is for uniform, which is something that uh, works in the GLSL shaders. Maybe we can see that in a future tutorial. And we give it, we pass it to the GLPX. Now we need the corresponding parameter here. Parameter time, let's give it an argument for zero. And we can use this to modify our, our functions. For example, what can we do? We can multiply our sign function by some other sign value from the time. For example, we can do something like that. Let's see how this is coming out. I don't know what is this going to happen. Yes, yes, something like that. Not really fancy because yes, that's not really fancy. Uh, what if we add? No, it is going away. But if we add it here before of the multiplication by two pi, we should get some simple animation. Yeah, something like that. Some simple animation. Uh, for example, we can use the modulus object, which uh, gives us the reminder on the first input in respect to the second input. We give it, uh, I don't know, the five uh, number. So we get numbers only in between uh, zero and five from the time parameter. And we can use this to multiply, I don't know, we can use this to multiply the x value, I don't know, yes, this is totally, totally stupid animation. <laughs> well, guys, I'm going to think some better way to animate our functions, but this is just to show you uh, that you can animate things in the GTGLPX world and you can actually plot functions, animate them. I don't know what if we sum we should get. Yeah, not really interesting. But I'm going to think something better. By now, I think uh, this can be can be it. In the next tutorial, I want to get deeper inside the legit GLPX world. Maybe build some shapes, like rectangles, shape, um, circles. In the end, we can even uh, reach some ray tracing uh, stuff. It's pretty complex, but not really that much. So see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.